Greetings everyone and welcome back to Sorcery. We're gonna continue where we left off with this Necropolis. I still am not sure should I should I backtrack a bit because my goal is here. It's the north gate. It's like right there and we would be done with this part of the game and this of course is really interesting as well. So I guess we could uh, uh let's let's see maybe there will be some items we would need. The wind whistles between the tall trees. The sun is setting behind the wall. You step nervously of the path and walk between the nearest tombs. Some are ancient, headstones tilted to crazy angles and some of them fallen face down as thought as citizens of this graveyard have been drinking since that they died. Others are fresh, neatly carved and clean of almost and wheat. They sparkle in the moonlight as thought cleaned by mites and waiting for their occupants to arrive. Explore the tombs. Why would I do that? You leave the path for the oldest area of the graveyard. In the corner nearest to the city wall, most of the stones here are now mere rubble. A few statues lie face down in the mud. A tree has split through a carved stone coffin. Find the oldest grave. You soon find what looks to be the oldest tomb. It is a small mausoleum with a low roof supported by ornately carved pillars. An inscription reads, Here lies Lorak, founder of Kare. Ah, neatly. The tomb is a simple stone cabinet carved with a likeness of a man. From centuries of rain and wind you can make out nothing of it but a long greasy beard. Below the inscription is a longer tablet but it, it is half withered and covered in moss. You cre clear away the dirt from the carved inscription but you still cannot make out the words. Only trace their outlines with your finger. The eyes of the carved statue appear to be watching you. You look closer at the carved man, but notice nothing more, it is just an engraving of an old man. In a serenade death pose, if this really is the grave of the founder of Kare, the chances are he did not die quite so peacefully. For the rubbing of the inscription you would need some kind of charcoal to rub with, and you have nothing that will do. You head away from the tomb. Okay, so seems like there was charcoal to obtain at some point, so we could make something out of this. There are several tombs here. There must have been a recent plague on the ridge in the city. They are scattered around in roughly alphabetical groups. You have bros around the tombs looking for a name you recognize, but none of them catch your eye. Something fi filters past your face. A bat? <gasps> it will be a vampire and it will eat my face off. No? Maybe? Perhaps? I'm quite sure there was something about opening the gate and that I need some kind of words and one of these guys who possess this word is dead. You went there further between the gravestone but still nothing stands out for you. You look from one headstone to the other, a few catch your eye, though you cannot immediately say why. You examine a prior gravestone, but there is nothing special about it except how new it seems to be. The stone has barely withered at all, as if poor Priya might have only been buried last week. If that's true, however, no one has left her flowers. You walk over to the rift tomb, but it seems quite ordinary, an angel with a covered face and beneath its clouded feet. A dying serpent. Then, suddenly, you hear a deep moan and then a rattle of chimes. 
Something is clouding the air in front of you. It is ah, uh, that right. This land is cursed for the living. The dead right moons rising, its ghostly spectral arms and holding out bony fingers. You must become dead. Oh my god. Uh, well, I guess what else I, I could expect for the <laughs> running around the cemetery, touching stuff. I don't really, I don't really want to fight it, to be perfectly honest. But maybe there is something I can do here. Read minds. Huh. Gak. Cast fear. The quiet a black face mask. I have that. Oh my god, I think this might work. Although, can you really scare a ghost? Uh, that is one way to find out. You put on the black face mask and cast the spell. Then you turn to the dead right. For a moment it seems to hover in the air, but then it continues to come forward. Clearly, however, terrifying you have become. It is as nothing compared to the face of the dead itself. You read your sword and strike at the dead right, but the blade passes straight through. It seems normal weapons cannot harm this creature, but when it leashes out with the black of its hand, you feel that well enough. <gasps> we... Yes, we have silver chain. I remember this. That must work. Thinking quickly, you dig up the chain maker silver chain instead and wind it about one hand. The dead right grinds and leers closer. Let's do this. You keep up your desperate attacks. You leash to the dead right with your length of chain. With a final strike, the creature wails and moans and seems to vanish in on itself. The air is suddenly a little warmer. For stamina lost, skilled sword play. Could go better, I think, but I played it safe, so. You hurry back onto the path before the creature can rise again. In the fields of the graveyard, you see other specters rising from the earth. Yep, we out of here. Nothing really Jane, but oh well. Beside the gate is a uh, disused well, perhaps once used to drop water to wash the bodies before internment. Internment. Hey, this is the well I came from. You silly game, you don't remember. <laughs> Pull out up the bucket. You turn the winch on the side of the well, drying up the bucket from beneath. It comes to the top filled with clear water. It must be drawn from a level even lower than the sewers you explored. Oh, so it does remember, <laughs> actually. Is this as fresh as the water from the other fountain you tried? Well, I could use some stamina back. So... Let's try drink. You scoop a handful of water and taste it, despite your surrounding. It is fresh and quite clear. You feel much better for it. You peer back down into the well. The climb was certainly long. You can make out nothing of the bottom at all. The rear gate of the grave that comes from its highest, but not from age. It seems it has been taken apart, maybe. We did not even to let something through. Beyond is deep forest. You walk for a half an hour through thick trees along the narrowing track until you reach a fork in the road. To the left of the track gets narrower still. To the right a massive shadow looms as large it seems as tough as Colossus has seated itself on the wall in truth. A chilled wind blows through you, as true ghosts walk back and forth this way. Huh. The shadow to the right has jagged seal hold. It is ziggurat, with perhaps a hundred steps leading to its apex. The trees whisper and move. Looking left, you see a distant flicker torch through the trees. The north gate, perhaps? 
Night is drowning end. You should get moving. Things whisper between the trees. Yeah, we should we should definitely check this. You stand at the base of the towering ziggurat, built from carved stone blocks. Each the size of a hay bale. The temple rises higher than the city wall and posi positions to catch the fifth star of evening at its uppermost point, a moment which has just passed. You tilt your head back looking for an opening and finally make one out, a small black dot. About a third of the way up, but even that is quite some climb. For the less devoted worshipper is a small gargoyle, but the step has an open mouth, ready to accept offerings. Huh. The gargoyle is carved in the shape of a small but spiky dog with a long claws, sharp horns and pointy beard. Its mouth is wide open and its tongue to lolls out with a coin-shaped slot at the back of its throat. You slide a gold piece into a gargoyle's mouth. For a moment nothing happens. Then it appears to sw swallow and next it opens its stone eyelids to reveal two crisp and beautiful eyes. Looking into the gargoyle's eyes fills you with a sense of calm and peace. The eyes close after a moment but the sense of the well-being remains. Or did you just imagine that the gargoyle move? You begin to climb howling yourself up the first step. Either the ziggurat was built for giants or ascending in this act of devotion. The next few steps are equally exhausting. You have to throw your pack up first and follow. Then, how are in air? Nope. I don't want to, I don't feel item. Growing size. That's one way to do it, I guess. Float in air. That might do. Yeah, let's do this one. Because the spell reducing your weight to that of the feeder, the climb should now be effortless. You preserve, you climb quickly up the steps, swung to your spell, but as you climb higher the Going becomes easier. The temple's designers have built a clever optical illusion into the slope of the pyramid. Soon each step is only wise height. You reach a halfway point almost as high as the city wall beyond and pause to the rest. You are halfway up. Freeziness of gargoyles in Polish metals means the temple on its level. You pause to take it the view. From this side of the ziggurat you can see nothing but the top of the wall and beyond the gleaming darkness of the marshes of the backlands. You move around to the north face, you can see the path ahead in pruning stride between wheeled and overground trees. It seems very few people come this way anymore. The north gate itself is now visible, however, and appears deserted. Huh. Then you notice a point of light, a torch has been lit between the trees. You watch as the torches move through the trees, towards the path. They are making slow progress, but they are moving towards the graveyard. Presumably from there on into town, the wind clouds at you, trying to pull you to earth. Hmm. Climb higher? You continue to climb to the fifth level of the ziggurat. Oh my god, that was just this one. You climb for another 20 minutes up the steps stone steps until you are gasping and panting for the brief once more, but finally you reach the dark opening that you saw from the base of the temple. The steps themselves continue up a little farther, still to the very peak of the temple. The opening is guarded by rock sculptured images of unimaginable creatures. Beyond you see a long dark hallway with something large and gleaming at the far end. Huh. Seems like there will be a bit more to do here, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna break this episode here because I think I'm recording pretty long. And I'm in the next one I'm gonna try to finish the game. Because I think it will be rest will be explored this 
place and we probably be able to move on to the north gate and see what's going on there. So yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'm gonna see you in the next video. See ya!